Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today we're going to be getting into the latest news because one, the Raiders signed a guy. No, it's not Sidney Jones, but we will talk about him in just a second. We'll cover all of the injury news that y'all need to know on today's show, but before we get into all of that, Raider Nation is family, and I know that y'all believe that with all of your heart, and it saddens me, it saddens the nation, when you see big-time Raiders players like Derek Carr, A.J. Cole, Max Crosby, out on social media tweeting that, R.I.P. to Ray Guy. Now, unfortunately, I am a little bit younger, never really had the pleasure to watch Guy at his best, but I know this, a lot of people, and I know y'all believe this, that Ray Guy is the greatest punter of all time and for that reason I want you all to show Guy a little bit of love passed away unfortunately at the age of 72 so please spam RIP for Ray Guy. Now we're going to transition to some of the news that literally just happened here. The Las Vegas Raiders signed wide receiver Malik Turner to the practice squad. He's six foot two. 202 pounds. When I go through and look at a lot of the numbers this season, he's played in three games, no catches here. Last season with the Dallas Cowboys, did play in 14 games, had 16 targets, 12 catches, 149 yards, three touchdowns. Didn't play too much in 2020 and 2019. Also, started in three games that season, 15 grabs, 245 yards, and one touchdown. So Turner, we'll see if he ever gets any playing time whatsoever. I think this is just trying to add a little bit more depth. Now, the reason why he was able to be added to the practice squad is because of UDFA from Notre Dame, Myron Tagovailoa Amosa. He got sent to the practice squad injured list. He hasn't played at all this season. He looked pretty solid, I thought, during the preseason. But at the end of the day, not too much of a injury concern. Now, I know the player that probably the reason why y'all clicked on this video is because of Sidney Jones. The Raiders, when they woke up this morning, and still to this day, are number six on the waiver wire order. And if you don't know what the waiver wire order essentially goes, the same way that the NFL draft goes, They're, they'd be number six overall pick. Sidney Jones cleared waivers, and this is a player that I would love for the Raiders to go out and try to get. I would anticipate that his phone's going to be ringing off the hook. Now, some of you are like, well, Mitch, if they didn't put a claim in for him, why would they go sign him now? The reason is, this offseason, Jones signed a brand new deal with Seattle for $3.6 million. I don't really think that the Raiders or any NFL team, for that matter, wanted to take on that contract. So for that reason, he is now a free agent. If I'm the Raiders, I would love for them to sign Jones because Anthony Averett has struggled the last two games since he's come back, and Jones could just simply be a plug-and-play player until Nate Hobbs becomes healthy again. It's not that Jones isn't healthy, or it's not that Jones isn't good. It's Seattle was going with younger cornerbacks that were able to step up. So I'm looking at all y'all right now. I would love for the Raiders to sign Sidney Jones. Now, they also worked out a player yesterday, and that's Farrell Cooper. You know that the Raiders love, at least McDaniel Ziegler do, this Patriots regime that they brought in. They love players that add special teams value. And Cooper is somebody who has a lot of special teams value. He's got a, he's like a two-time pro bowler, being a special teams player. No stats this season. Last season, though, four catches, 33 yards. And if you'll notice, what jersey he's repping, the Jags. I do think there's a small chance that they brought in Cooper to just get a little bit of an inside scoop with their upcoming Week 9 matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, if you love the Raiders, hey, I hope they hit that subscribe button. We got free videos for y'all literally every single day. Jeremy Chuggs and I are going to be live later today for a watch party for Thursday Night Football. We also got a special surprise because not only is it going to be a watch party for Thursday Night Football, it's World Series Game 5. Philly, Houston on the field and on the baseball diamond. So hit that subscribe button and join us. If you're looking for the latest injury news, you're also in the right place. Another reason to hit that big old red button that says sub and turn on those noties. For Devontae Adams, he's been battling this flu illness for quite some time. There's been some stories out there that maybe Devontae got the rest of the team sick last week. I don't know if I'm going to buy that. To me, though, you're hoping that Adams can have a bounce back week after only getting targeted five times, one catch, for three yards. The next injury that we're going to talk about here on the show is going to be around the quarterback, Derek Carr. Apparently, he's been dealing with a little bit of a back issue, and 
DC has downplayed the injury. I'm going to downplay the injury on top of that. There was one source to me that said if you thought that Derek looked more stiff than usual, it's because he was dealing with that back injury. He needs a big-time game. He needs to step up this coming week against Jacksonville because you can't go to 2-6. and six. Even though Ziegler said Carr's playing great, apparently, I'm not buying it. In fact, I saw his nose growing as he was saying it. Derek, you need to step it up. Now, here's the thing, y'all. We're going to lost some new sponsor, and we've had a lot of sponsorships here on the Raiders Report, but this one is special to me. You could become a lord today by going to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. If you don't believe me, there you go. Here's my proclamation where I can legally be called a lord. Lord Mitchell Renz is technically my legal name. Now, if you're wondering, Mitch, what the hell are you even talking about? Listen up here. So here's our brand new sponsor. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global restoration efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. We plant a tree with every order, and we work with global charities, one tree planted, and treats for the future to support global restoration efforts. You can officially accord the title Lord or Lady on your credit card. Play tickets, dating profiles. It also makes us a great last-minute gift. I mean, let's face it, the holidays are right around the corner. And the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link that you can see down there below at EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. We will uh, be next to each other within a few minutes of walking distance. Now, depending on how many you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our very own Raider Nation. Now, because of Black Friday sale also, if you actually go to this link, you can save up to 80%. So save an extra 10%, perfect holiday gift, but you better act quick here. I know, it's a weird gift, and I always sit there and I'm like, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? Or, Ma, what do you want for the holidays? What do you want for Thanksgiving? They always give me a, oh, I don't care. To me, this is actually kind of a funny gift. If you got a pet or dog out there, pretty soon you're going to see Lord Chuck. Yeah, I love this new sponsorship, and it's for a good cause. Let's keep on rocking and rolling here with some injury news. This time, we're going to go to the defensive side of the football with Divine Diablo battling a back and wrist injury. Another limited participant here. If you guys have noticed, what you see in quotes up there on top is whether they were a full or limited participant. Adams Carr, full Diablo here, limited. Hopefully, he's able to play this upcoming week going up against Travis Etienne. Another player who's been limited due to a knee injury is Neil Farrell Jr., the rookie. Since Jonathan Hankins was traded away to the Cowboys, and if you looked at the numbers, Hankins balled out for Dallas this past week. It's really important that Farrell is able to play because Jacksonville's going to try to run the football. They've been running the football extremely effective with Etienne, and if you could slow down Etienne, you're going to win. Said that last week, though, the same with uh, Alva Kamara. Let's talk about the player that's probably the biggest injury news or concern. It's Darren Waller, and he's still dealing with, I know it says heel, that's on me. It's a hamstring injury. He missed week five. He missed week seven. He missed week eight. He's essentially had four weeks to be able to recover. I'm not sure if he's going to play. I have no idea. At this point, I'm done putting my neck on the line for Waller saying that I believe he's going to play. When you see all the beat reporters out there saying he looks like he's going to be good to go, I don't know if Waller doesn't want to play, if he just got the bag and now he's unmotivated because he does look pretty damn unmotivated on the sidelines. I want to see the Waller that was the top three tight end. I don't know if we're ever going to get that, unfortunately. So what do you think here? And I want you to be honest with me. Do you think Waller wants to be in Las Vegas? My answer is... Shrug emoji. I have no idea. I would like to believe that he wants to be in Vegas because Las Vegas gave him a chance when he was basically a, glo a grocery clerk. And then they gave him all these brand new targets. They put him in an offense that made it work. Now he's a multi-millionaire. I would imagine that he would still want to be in Vegas. But hey, maybe I'm totally wrong in saying that. All right, guys, coming up next here on the Raiders Report, we're going to get into more injury news. But before we do, I know a lot of y'all are already over on Locals. Man, we got 2,000 diehard Raider fans over there, some big-time members. And every single week we do an NFL Week Pick'em. The winner of our NFL Week A Pick'em was Aaron Devandry, who's been a member since September 7th. 2022, I told y'all, if you win NFL Week Pick'ems, which we do every week, there's already an NFL Week 9, 
If you win, we're going to give you a shout-out here on the Raiders Report. Aaron, shout-out to you for double-checking my math. You all know I'm not great at math. So Aaron's the winner here. And if you guys want to join to get even more exclusive videos, it's RaidersReport.Locals.com. $10 a month, $100 for the year. It's just exclusive content around me, around the Raiders. We also do extra live shows. It's an easy way for me to get to know you. Y'all get to know me. We're going to keep on going here with the injuries, which now I realize when I built these graphics, I switched Matt Collins and Darren Waller's injuries. So, again, on me. Matt Collins is dealing with a heel injury. He was a limited participant. And he dealt with an injury last week. Him and Hunter Renfro were game time decisions. Maybe if he would start wearing shoes more often because I don't know if he only wears shoes during game days. I know during his warm-ups, dude doesn't wear shoes. Uh, but, you know, to each their own. Next injury update coming up here is going to be around Sam Webb. Luckily, he was a full participant. Hamstring and the back has been his issue. The reason why I said fortunate is because if Anthony Averett continues to struggle, there's a part of me that's starting to wonder if, if Webb's going to start getting more work because they liked him during the preseason. He was a UDFA. He made the squad. He's a tough dude. I know a lot of the coaching staff likes Sam Webb, and he was one of my favorite UDFAs at the Raiders' sign. More injury news here. This guy is a backup guard. John Simpson did start the first two games of the season, but ankle, full participant, really wouldn't worry about it too much. We know what the Raiders' starting offensive line is. Colt Miller, Dylan Parham. Andre James, Alex Bars, Jermaine Illuminor. Simpson, though, is probably the next guy to step up in line at the guard position. And then another injury here, your long snapper, Trent Sieg. Long snappers are an important position. Whether you believe it or not, it is a important position. So before I wrap up today's show to all my lords and lairds out there, what do you think is the better game tonight? Because, again, like I mentioned earlier, Chugs and I, we're going to be live for our usual Thursday night football watch party. But I figured... Philly versus Houston, Philly versus Houston. So we're going to talk about both. we got some fun stuff in store. So what's the better game? Do you think it's Thursday night football, or do you think it's game five of the World Series? I'm a football diehard, but I kind of think it's the World Series. Now, before I go, y'all, remember if there's anything else that you need to know, you can always give me a follow on Twitter. You can give me a follow on Instagram. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep you guys up to date on the latest news, rumors, and all the good stuff that you need to know about the nation on social media. I'll see y'all later tonight, and uh, hopefully you guys tune into our watch party on Sunday as well when the Raiders, fingers crossed, take down the Jacksonville Jaguars.